Their Majesties call forth Duke Kellogg McCormick, Master of the Laurel. Ask it if it be a right and proper thing, it shall be yours. I would ask if you elevate my apprentice as a Call forth the candidate. Baron Edward Brackenberry, present yourself before their majesties. He who approacheth, deem you him worthy of this noble spirit. Yea, verily, yea. Hath he proven his skills in the arts? Yea, verily, yea. Then reveal him now to his sovereign majesties. Is there a royal peer who will attest to Edward's nobility? Please read it. Greetings to all from You've got the greatest suit to pile in the future, but I'll write the earliest night of the society, master of the world, and have some elegant line of people. Greetings to all. The great things happen to me that I cannot be with you on the best day. However, I am honored to speak with the world here today. I have known Edward for some time, and always have I admired his commitment and perseverance. Greetings to all. The great things happen to me that I cannot be with you on the best day. However, I am honored to speak with the world here today. I have known Edward for some time, and always have I admired his commitment and perseverance. He is the type of individual who believes in everyone's contribution to the value of each of the people that they have. Edward has worked diligently and passionately with David Barry, consistently demonstrating. His unwavering commitment to the ideal of our organization is evident in every task he undertakes. Whether it be organizing events, during newcomers, or participating in our city projects, Edward consistently goes above and beyond. Furthermore, Edward possesses exceptional leadership quality. He is adept at fostering collaboration and inspiring others to strive for excellence. His ability to communicate effectively and enhance been my swear for more than 20 years, studying the code of chivalry, and always, always upholding the highest level of behavior and courtesy. For me, I read for my friend far longer than that. Mm -hmm. He's always been a great friend to me, and I trust him with everything that I have. When my sons were born, Edward became the godfather. I need to stand in there in my place. Edward has faithfully served the kingdom as the third baron of the Pakham, with the archery champion, Hendrick, and served as the winter arts and science champion. I think anyone has spent more than a moment with Edward. Recognizes that this man has all the knightly virtues and full courage, strength, generosity, honesty, most important, loyalty. But what good are the other uh, chivalric virtues without the direction of the He has always directed them for the king of Edward's been an exceptional, exceptionally loyal player to me. 
Not just the simple loyalty of blind faith following someone without regard to his understanding of things. Uh, a faithful and well reason sharing all his virtues and supporting those. When he was chosen instead of to be the there in the platform, he knew that the requirements of the corporate field to be directed to the United States might come in conflict with our willingness to deal with each other. After agonizing over this situation, he consulted with me and with the king. After some consideration, he decided that I would listen to our ministry of the business. Today I get to do something that's put on guilty in anticipation of this elevation. There's nothing more than standing beside him. My brother here. Both of us is the right hand. Majesties. This is a faithful and loyal man. Listen carefully to this man's life. Be wise and deliberate. He will advise you well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Is there a member of the Laurel who will attest to Edward's arts and sciences? I am Master Millicent de Bear, and I will claim that matchless honor to speak for Baron Edward. Your Majesties, Gentle populace, before you kneels the most stubborn man I have ever known. <laughs> you can say, look, there is a clear and open path, well lit, even. No problem, it's so easy. And he would go, no, I don't want to go that way. I'm going over here, where there's tree roots and brambles and mud and dirt. And no light. And no light. I don't have to go that way. I'm not going to go the easier way. He never took the easy way. He never did what was easy. He never took a shortcut. But he did make things easier for other people and inspire others to make their road easier than the one he chose for himself. And while being stubborn is not up here like virtue, <laughs> I would say that courage is. And this man has no fear of any art or science. Any musical instrument, bagpipes, trombones, green, calligraphy, casting, wood carving, silk banner painting, be it tent or tavern, or complicated shoe embroidery, he fears no art. And on top of all that, he has that virtue of constant striving, of <coughs> being thirsty for knowledge, and always pushing himself that one step further that hopes a true fear. The order of the laurel would be improved by this addition. I'm not right. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Your Excellency. Is there a pelican who will attest to Edward's service? Hi, Your Majesties. I have that honor. I am Master Dirk Edward of Frisia, pelican of this kingdom. I get to address the quality of service, one of my favorite topics. His Excellency Brackenberry and I go a long way back now. His service to all, and I emphasize the word all, is legendary in my mind. And if you live in the Red in Clefflands, you know very well what it is. His service revolves around his service as a squire, his service as an officer, his service as a baron, his service 
to the fighting community as a marshal, the service to the archery community, the service to every single person that he meets. This is a quality of a peer that cannot be ignored in Texas. Not ignored. He is my peer in every way. I am delighted to speak on behalf of my work. Thank you, Master. Is there a member of the populace who will speak on Edward's behalf? That honor is mine, your majesties. I am Forrester Cadvin of the Autumn Wood, Middle Kingdom historian, and your most faithful servant. May I address your populace? Yes, please. Before the dragon throne kneels Edward Brackenberry, as he has knelt before the crown of the Middle Kingdom for, as its true servant for over a quarter century to be elevated to the Order of the Laurels. He is the third Baron of the Barony of the Clutlands. He was twice a royal champion. He was Clutland's armor champion. He was Clutland's archery champion three times in a row. He was twice a regional officer, and he is a companion of three grant-level orders, the Dragon's Heart, the Greenwood Company, and the Evergreen. He created the Honorable Company of Embroiderers, which now has over 300 participants from across the known world. <laughs> 39 Midrealmers have had their work paneled and judged by the Guild, including me. And the only things I have personally ever sewn have been at Edward's optimistic and very careful instruction. Peers of the society are the exemplars of their fields. They are role models whose qualities are to be emulated, for they represent the best of us. When I think of Edward Brackenberry, the quality I think of most is diligence. As many of us do, he has many hobbies, but he has never been content to just learn how to do something. He seeks to master the thing, no matter what it is. Many have seen his incredible skill at embroidery, but that skill came through years and years of patient practice. This same quality shows in his calligraphy, illumination, garb making, my hood, armored combat, and archery. He has excelled in all of these things, not because he was born being good at them, but because he strives ever to be better today than he was the day before. He has walked the path of the scholar all his life, always seeking improvement in his skill, always hungering for more knowledge, always teaching what he knows to those who ask for guidance. And this applies no matter if the implement he is holding is a sword, a bow, or an embroidery needle. Edward is a lifelong student, as all good teachers are. But today, you will become a master. Thank you, Thank you, Forrester. Summon our most noble order of the Laurel. Master and mistresses of the Laurel, present yourselves before their majesties. Masters and mistresses of the Laurel, is it, is it your opinion that Edward Brackenberry, for his skill in the art of embroidery, is worthy of elevation to the order of the Laurel? Aye. Edward, right by flogging your servant, please. your labors nobly, increase your talents as the fifth one of your rank, and seek to disseminate your talents and abilities throughout the society. 
You promise to train any dependents you may have to do likewise. Is there a medallion? Edward, take this from our hand, this symbol of nobility and a token of our esteem. Wear it proudly so others may recognize you for your skills, your services, and we have recognized it this day. Is there a wreath? Wear this wreath as a symbol of your excellence. Is there a cloak? Edward, wear this cloak in an outward token of your new station. Edward, are you prepared to take your own? This do we hear, and shall never forget, nor fail to reward that which is given. Guilty with love, service with honor, and oath-breaking with justice. Master Edward Brackenberry, the newest companion of the Order of the Laurel. Woo! and Mayasa, our queen, knowing the excellence and expertise in the arts and sciences, Edward Brackenberry hath displayed in art and embroidery and the generosity of spirit which he has shared our minded to create him a companion of the order of the world, to be in all places numbered a peer of our realm, all privileges and responsibilities, and rights thereto appertaining with the right to bear arms, letters, and patents within society. <laughs> Master Edward Brackenberry! Huzzah! <laughs> 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 